Hi everyone. Hi, okay. Hi everyone, and welcome to the afternoon session. Um, this afternoon session, we'll be having a game taking us through the process of um, AK will be talking to us about the slow death of cookies and what it means to Mautic. Before AK goes on to talk about that, let me quickly do an introduction. So AK is a marketer by education and um, infrastructure and security specialist in the early days. Or well, is now focused on providing smart technical solutions for smart digital marketing. Is an active open source contributor for almost 20 years at least since digital marketing. He, they also give professional services and support to multi users and multi agencies around the world. Everybody, please welcome AK Gumbe, who is the multi enthusiast and also literature digital marketing and also the community team leader at Mautic. Hi, Higi. Hi, Toby. That's right. Thanks for the introduction. Um, yeah, how are you doing today? How was the day I'm so good. far? It's been good, been good, been good. It's been yeah. good. Um, um, meeting different speakers, also learning as I also be able to help, to also help share the um, sessions. Hi, AK, can you hear me? Yeah, are you ready to go? All right. Oh, great, great. All right, so I'll leave you up to it so I come back later for questions and answers. Okay, thank you, Toby. Um, yeah, um, if you are like me, then then um, you probably do a lot with Mordic and you do it in an all-round way. At least I am not a developer and um, mostly talking about strategy and, and uh, project management and, and capabilities, etc. cetera. Um, but sometimes it gets down to a little bit technology and then tech. And um, specifically in this case, it, it is the whole bandwidth because you hear stories, you hear claims from people who say, ooh, we are in trouble, we will be in trouble. Uh, marketing automation is not going to work in the future, etc. That's not from from far away people; it's really from people within the community, from customers, etc. So I thought it's worth digging a little bit deeper and to uh, help everybody truly understand what what's coming and what's not coming, and what it means to us. So here we go with uh, everything on the slow death of cookies. Um, first of all, obviously. The question is, what is this all about? Is this, are we in crisis mode? Um, the fact is that the browsers have been changing their behavior towards better privacy protection for quite a while, and they are in the process of doing it, and they doing more and deeper steps in the future. Also, at the same time, the legislation is developing in a privacy-friendly direction, which I like. And uh, that's not all the same across the world, but, but the direction is all the same everywhere, and we're only getting tougher, not, not laxer, I guess. So questions are, what are the general impacts for marketers, um, specifically for Mordic, what are the impacts? And uh, all that, again, big picture and also a little bit of tech. Let's start with the basics, really briefly, because most of you will know it know it, what are cookies in a nutshell. Uh, cookies are tiny pieces of information that a server can send to a browser. The browser can store it and will send it back to that server every time uh, it is sending a request to that server. So it's not like everybody else can read it, but everybody from that domain name can read that information. Um, typical Use cases, and that's what cookies were made for in the beginning, are um, session um, maintenance. Like, like the, the, when I do a first click and a second, how does the server know that this uh, that they two belong together? Especially when I log in, how does the server know that that this subsequent request belongs to the browser that just logged in? Technically, this is frequently used by, uh, solved by cookies. Same 
if I set a pre pre preferred language on the on the server, if I have something in the in a shopping basket or any other choices, etc. So that's what cookies were made for. But of course, it's been taken way beyond by now. Uh, and one of those advanced use cases are tracking. In Mautic, we do use tracking extensively. That's really the basic of uh, personalized marketing. Um, but we do it on a, in a local fashion. So we want to identify contacts when they come back to our same Mautic system. Um, advertising networks, including Google, uh, are, or also including Facebook, etc., cetera, uh, are doing much, much more. They um, work with millions of sites on the internet and uh, aggregate, aggregate all the data and uh, um, basically are able to do some, some internet-wide tracking and profiling. The way that works is that, um, once again, information is stored or whenever and retrieve whenever somebody requests something from a server. And now a pixel, for instance, is included in a certain re website. So let's say we have a website XYZ, and that website includes a pixel from Google um, or LinkedIn or whatever. Uh, now, when the browser retrieves that pixel, then that is a request under the hood to a different server. And that server is now able to set a cookie, and when, when another request comes in, maybe I'm now on a completely different website, but still uh, pulling a LinkedIn pixel, again, uh, LinkedIn will be able to aggregate with that because the browser knows, oh, LinkedIn, I have, I have a cookie for that. So uh, LinkedIn can now aggregate the behavior of the user behind that browser. So all this is called third party cookies. So first party is the website that I'm on. Third party is some other service that are setting cookies um, on my browser without me knowing it. Um, privacy con concerns are pretty obvious. Um, LinkedIn or Google or Facebook or whoever are able to aggregate my behavior and, and do a real deep profiling over years and years and know everything about me. That's this whole transparency. And then they can even connect that to other data sources. And then, uh, yeah, that's Big Brother as we know it. Um, and we all know um, we don't like that. So that's why all this backlash comes up. Um, third party cookies, just to drive it a little further, further um, can be set in a different way. And that is through JavaScript. Basically, uh, a, a, a server can instruct a browser to set a cookie, and uh, JavaScript can as well. And this is a, the last part, part of nerdy technology now, but, but I think it's important to understand that because this is a part that most people do not really get right. So uh, JavaScript, JavaScript gets loaded. Let's say I, I access a Mordic system, a Mordic, uh, gives me a JavaScript, the browser executes the JavaScript, and now uh, the, the JavaScript instructs the browser to set a cookie on my own domain, a first-party cookie with a, with a value that is determined by, by the third-party system. Um, so if you ever looked at the, into your browser, you, you may have seen that, that uh, Mordic is doing exactly that for a reason. Um, and subsequently, that same JavaScript or different JavaScript can, if executed on that website, can retrieve that cookie and set, send that information to the Mordic server, but not through a cookie, but through a GET request. And if that's a bit complicated, here's an example. In this case, it's, it's Google Analytics. Um, and when I look at a request for, uh, that goes to leuchtfeuer.com to our website, then a cookie is part of that request because it had been set previously through JavaScript. And that in, in, in includes a couple of data sets from Google. So again, this goes in a request from my browser to 
the Leuchtfeuer website. Um, but it does not go to Google. To Google, something else uh, happens. Uh, a Google JavaScript will look at the cookie that has been sent by my browser and will take that information and, and wraps it into a request, a get request, and sends that to the server. That's the way um, first-party cookies can be, or the content of first-party cookies can be sent over to third-party websites. That's the way analytics, etc., work today. Um, if the third party, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, this is, when I say cookie, there are also other means because people try everything to, to avoid countermeasures. So, um, uh, Mordic does it, Google Analytics does it, and everybody else does it as well to store that information not only in cookies, but also redundantly in other places in the browser that allow that. For instance, the local storage, famously. Um, yeah, so this is how tracking works these days. And um, now what do the browsers do? First of all, the regular third-party cookies have been blocked for a while by Firefox and Safari. Chrome is uh, announcing to stop that by end of 2020, next year, uh, to do the same, to, to block third-party cookies as well. Um, that's a big deal because the market share of Chrome is, is really dominant these days, except, of course, on, on iPhones, for instance, where everything is Safari or WebKit, rather. Um, those browsers actually do more than just block third-party cookies. They block additional or other means of fingerprinting. Um, and they also try to detect um, what we just discussed, the, the first party tracking through JavaScript. At least uh, they have some, some sort of machine learning where, where they find out who is, go, who is trying the, the cross or cross internet profiling. So they, they call it ITP or enhanced tracking protection. That, that's why they call it uh, intelligent because it's, it's self-learning and it's supposed to mm, uh, prevent the profiling as good as possible. Um, of course, other things are going on that affect cookie handling. Most of them have to do with security because that is of course an attack vector as well. And the legislation, as we know, is moving forward. We have consent managers all over the place and that is hurting us and everybody. So when I say hurting, um, what, what are the impacts? Um, first of all, who would be impact, impacted? One is the ad networks, those guys who earn a ton of money by placing and selling ads on the internet. That's Google, but also others. Um, then it's marketers who want to buy this, those ads if they cannot really do the targeted ads or whatever, if they cannot place the ads as they are used to, then something's taken away from them. The other end, on the other end, marketers who do not really care about ads, but want to have the insights through analytics, etc., um, also should care about the future. Does it all work in the future? And, and then there are marketers who want to do something with the audience directly, uh, names may sound familiar, like Mordic and marketing automation. So this is why we also care. Um, so who's, who's really affected? Let's see. Um, Google Analytics, will that still work? Yeah, they do the first party cookie trick. Um, they are not, not blocked, blocked by ITP, by Safari or others. So um, that's fair, that's okay. We can still see who is visiting our website um, who is um, causing events on our website, uh, or, or what do people do on the website, that's still there. Um, 
except for content manager, of course. Um, and analytics itself is also moving um, in the future. Uh, the, the embedding in Google Tag Manager is, is evolving. People go to GTM or to Google Analytics 4 and, and they have server side and then they have other tricks how, how that can be made more efficient, but also more future proof. So that's, that's in constant movement, but, but it is still going to work because it's important, it's not going away. But what is going away? Um, there are certain things that are not going to work by the end of 2020, if all goes as, as announced. Um, most notably, remarketing, retargeting, personalized, personalized ad targeting, not possible as we know it. Conversion tracking, very important. Attribution, hugely affected. And then again, some, some cross-domain profiling as, as the browsers allow it, or disallow it rather. Um, in short, everything that does not bring its own JavaScript uh, is in trouble, or if it does bring its own JavaScript but is troubled, it, but is uh, affected by, by the tracking protection, then it is also probably being a red race at least. Okay, so hugely affected the ad industry. Google has its own ideas. Basically, they are playing two roles here. They, they sell the browser that is stopping the third-party cookies. At the same time, they sell ads that are based on third-party cookies. So what did they come up with? Um, basically, they m move things into the browser. They let this, the browser do the job. They call this a privacy sandbox and uh, provide a couple of APIs to work with that without personalization. So the, the core term here is federated learning of cohorts, flocks. Um, so co cohorts are basically categories of of interest, and uh, the, brow the browser does some, some magic and calculation and says, okay, this user is probably interested, interested in, in dog food and in shoes and in uh, traveling. And so this information can be retrieved through API, and now Google can display me the, the, the perfect ads. Um, they can even use this for some sort of limited remarketing in a concept that's called Fledge. It's not really there yet, but that's their best effort to get in the direction. Um, I think it has a bit of flaws, but, but of course it's, it's hard to come up with alternatives if you want to be private and secure. So what about the others? What we just described, this, this whole browser side thing, obviously requires the browser to do this. And Google does it in Chromium and, and implements that in Chrome. Microsoft already decided, although they are based on Chromium, not to uh, move it into Edge. And um, the other ones, uh, Safari and WebKit, and Mozilla in, in Firefox, I'm pretty sure they're not going down that path. It's more like a, uh, selling point for them not to have that ad integration. Um, so it's it's Chrome, but it's still huge market share. Who can work with that? Google will. Others can as well. So the, there are open APIs. It's, it's a proposed standard. So other uh, ad technology companies can hook up to that and display their own ads. Of course, they don't know whether Google will play fair and, and all, but, but that's the best they have today. Um, and it's a frequent discussion whether Google is really going to do that or what the alternatives are. My gut feeling is, yes, they will do this. They will probably not do it by end of next year, really because they lose money, they can earn a lot of money by just delaying it another year. And it is going to be Chrome only. What are the alternatives? What can, could ad networks do alternatively? Um, yeah, do nothing, or do untargeted, untargeted marketing, which, well, I don't know, or go this way or 
I have no idea. So this is going to be it, I'm, I'm afraid. It's not like I'm an ad, ad guy, but, but uh, it's a weird situation and it's a very bad place for Google or at least for the rest of the world that Google is trying to, to take this place. Anyways, um, that's the ad industry. For us, we care more, more about Mordic and uh, what does it all mean for Mordic? Um, we have a couple of things on the to-do list, of course. We need to make sure that we are always on, on top of the technical requirements like we had in the past with the same site or there may be others in the future. So keep up with the browser requirements. The other thing is support the consent managers as good as we can to make it easier for our users or administrators rather. Um, and there's a special field that's uh, multi-domain support. So the situation here is the, the marketing and automation tool is on a different domain than the actual company's domain. Maybe the company has multiple domains like .com, .de, et cetera, are different domains. Um, so one option would be to have more, more tick on a single domain as we have it today. Uh, the better would be to allow Mordic to deliver assets on a matching domain, maybe subdomain, whatever. That's a frequent discussion when it comes to optics, when, when I send people to, a, a, let's say, a property page, some sort of landing page, and that is under the domain of the Mordic, uh, and people are confused. So multi-domain on that alone would be nice to have the entire Mordic run on a different domain, a uh, bigger deal. Not sure, maybe we can do that in the future. Uh, so multi-domain multi -domain support. UTM, we did not really talk about that yet, but for conversion tracking, that is really one key part in the future. Of course, we don't do conversion tracking in, in a Mordic, but uh, still, it's going to be very central, so it's um, good to, to support that as best as we can going forward. Um, what's the future going to bring? Um, <clears throat> things, things. There are going to be more things in the future. For instance, one discussion that you see is that, that people say, hey, you have some sort of uh, own tracking, why not connect that own tracking to an ad network to help them do the, the display ads or whatever? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Uh, private targeting, if it's really private and, and uh, legally okay, etc. Maybe that's one thing that will come down the road eventually. Uh, in total, Mordic is not in trouble. The opposite is true. We are in a really, really good position because we are completely first party, even self-hosted is uh, possible, which is important for many, at least over here in Europe. Um, we are, so we're technically well, well equipped, we're legally well equipped and even ethically, uh, we're the good ones, aren't we? Uh, so let's, let's leverage all that. Let's make sure to deliver what it takes in the future and also to, to talk about it in, in marketing and everything because it's a huge selling point for, for Mordic. It's uh, under leveraged or under utilized. Um, yeah, so, so let's make it big. It's a USP for us. Um, if you are interested in doing something about it, explaining pe to people, coming up with ideas for improvements or with concepts, implementing those concepts, um, we have those tiger teams and in tracking and everything around it is its own tiger team. It's not yet launched, but if you're interested in being part of the tiger team, you're very welcome to contact me and I'll uh, put that in, in the right channels and make sure we're getting somewhere really soon. That's it for today. Thank you very much for listening. And um, I'm looking forward to questions now, or of course, in the future, you can contact me on Slack uh, was that Eki? That's E double K E. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Eki. Hey, uh, 
Do you have any questions for me, Toby? Yes, yes, we have questions. So I'll be going through the questions shortly. Um, okay. So sure. someone is asking, and that is Catherine. I'm interested in the fact that consumer awareness of this is so limited. Do you see consumers' own behavior, example, consent management, as posing challenge? Gis? So far, it is tech giant led. Um, mm. I'm not sure I really can parse it. So, um, one thing is that may be culturally, culturally different. People are aware mostly when, when news media talk about it, and sometimes that is the case. Of course, they don't get everything right and they don't get the implications right, but it comes up and it, it is important. Um, the awareness on the, on the company side, if, if a client or any, any sort of Mordic user uh, or marketing automation user is looking to take the right directions and then to, to plan for the future, that's what, where I came from, that people do have fears and uncertainties. So I think um, it's not necessarily explained enough. We, we need to talk about it indeed, uh, to explain, explain to people where they are, where we are, where we are going to be in the future, and that we are, we are safe, we are not going to go away. Um, What's, what was the part about contact management? Okay, cons consent management. Now, consent management. Okay, wh what was about that? Okay, um, Katrin is trying to type again what um, exactly the question is. Okay, why, 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 why the concern is coming? So let me ask you another thing, um, AK. So I can see that from what you've given, the talk you've given so far, I have to do from the technical standpoint. And um, everybody knows you to be the community lead. You are not really a technical person. Is it that you are changing from being a, a community leader, a marketer <laughs> to a developer? Yeah, I know. No, no, don't worry. It's it's really what I what I explained in the beginning that I I come from a technical background, um, especially when it comes to infrastructure infrastructure and security. Um, so I have that knowledge today. I'm not working on that on a day to day basis, but I think sometimes it is important to get it right to to clean up the understanding and to to get the message out as well so maybe we'll do some some additional po blog posts as well uh to explain in detail and in in plain english uh what what this is about all right great okay so back to the first question so um katrin yeah again is saying uh mostly cost most consumers currently accept all cookies that is yeah. um, in the continuation of the past one. Then, then there's an addition which says, um, but do you think this will change? Example, my parents in their 70s just accept all cookies. But surely, more and more people are managing consent on a granular level. Hmm. I would not say I can necessarily confirm that from observation. It's, it's more that that consent rates go up, not down. So people get completely fed up with all those uh, windows, like we had with cookie, cookie banners 10 years ago. People tend to click. I also see a lot of consent managers being rather pushy, like you can either confirm or go into settings. No, the, the the proper way, the legally correct way in, uh, in our sphere anyway, would be to say uh, you can confirm or deny or go, go to settings. If you take away the deny button, it, 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 is, it makes it more difficult for users to deny. So they don't want to spend that extra time and just, so what, they, they accept. So, so 
I see a little bit of shift on the side of on the, on the way how consent management is used. So far, I haven't heard of legal consequences that, that somebody has uh, really been forced to to do a proper consent banner. Um, and so the effect is is really, or, or seems to be, the opposite that people don't care, they don't want to be bothered, and uh, really the the actual rates in in what I see and in, in those sites that I've in, in in my vision um, are going up. People, it's, it's still, it, it's not not really beyond fifty percent, but it started off with with more like. Uh, 30% consent rate in, in some, some industries, and it's definitely going up drastically. All right, good, 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 good. Yeah, All right, thanks add, so much. Let, let okay. me add one, one thing, Toby, sorry. Um, there are also movements to to some, somehow do a correction on that. If, if we have a good enough number of a consent rate, so we know 40% of the users accept and 60 deny. And um, we, then, then we can basically say, okay, we had 500 people on, on this side. So probably it is going to be, uh, well, 500 through 40 times 60, oh, times 100. Okay. Um, so you can basically extrapolate from there. And that, that can be done pretty simply. And, and the rate can be verified from time to time. But uh, this is also an approach that Google and others do uh, take to to do a more automated way of uh, coming into to better absolute numbers. Okay, sorry. For that. All right, that's good. So we have no more questions. So um, at this point, I would like to thank you for coming up to discuss about this crucial topic. Um, mm -hmm. That I have to give you this little bit of cookies and what you will need to start working towards to um, make sure that we keep our business running. Um, thanks so much, AK. And um, I'm sh we've met so many times, so this is not actually our first time. So, so I, <laughs> we know ourselves very well. All right, thanks so much again, AK. So, thanks, Toby. Um, we, we see you again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.